Okay, today we are going to be working on the review for sum and difference identities or formulas and double angle. Just pull that up. I posted the blank review on my website along with the answer key, but right now I'm going to work through these problems with you so that you know how I got the answers that I got. So number one, under sum and difference, just asks you to find sine of 105 degrees. And the reason we have these formulas is because we only can do trig by hand with certain values without have being given a table um, to do what a calculator would do for us. So we only work in 30, 45, and 60 degree increments or at those 90 degree locations, the special locations, north, south, east, and west. So we need something to help us find the sine of 105 degrees without using a calculator. And the formula, well, first of all, let's see if we can separate 105 into two angles that we are able to use. So any combination of a 30, 45, or a 60. I'm going to use a 60 plus 45 because that adds up to 105. There's a formula to use in order to be able to evaluate it like that. So sine of 60 plus 45 would use the formula sine, cosine, cosine, sine. Then we go back and we add in our positive or negative in the formula. Oh, Lordy. If it's plus there, then it's plus here. Sorry about that. And then the last thing you'll do is go back and add in angle one, angle two, angle one, angle two. And all that's left to do is evaluate. So sine of 60 is root three over two. Cosine of 45 is root two over two. And both 60 and 45 are in quadrant one. So all of our answers for these will be positive. Plus cosine of 60 is one half. Sine of 45 is root two over two. When you multiply these fractions together, you get root six over four plus root two over four. And we can combine those into one fraction as root six plus root two all over four because of the common denominator. You may not combine root six plus root two. That does, that does not become root eight. They are not like terms. And if you wanted to test that in your calculator and see if the decimals came out the same, you can do that. But you cannot combine those any further. All right, let's look at number two. So, so the, all the different things we learned with sine and cosine and tangent of sum and difference and double angle, we learned how to, like what we just did, take an angle we don't know and pull it apart and plug it into a formula given. We also learned how to take not even angles, but values for sine, cosine, or tangent, draw triangles and plug those values into a formula, which is what we're about to practice. And then the third thing we learned was how to look at an expression where someone had already used the formula and we worked backwards to simplify it to what were they originally working with and can I simplify this expression and evaluate it? So those are the three things we learned how to do using a lot of different formulas. Let's go back to the second one. On number two, we're given sine A equals 12 over 13. Okay, that's obviously not a 30, 45, or a 60. So we're not dealing with our unit circle values at this point. We're going to have to go back to triangle land. And it tells you that A lives between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. So between 90 and 180, that's quadrant two. And then you're given tangent of angle B equals 
negative four thirds and you're told that B lives between 270 and 360. Uh-oh. Don't know why I did that. So that is quadrant four. That's what we're given. Let's go back and draw some pictures. This is angle A. We're, it's named A because it says sine of A. And sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So from angle A, opposite to A is 12. Hypotenuse is 13. We're also told that this is quadrant 2. If it's quadrant 2, that means that sine is positive and cosine is negative. That'll just help us later when we go to use the formula. But what we have left to do here is we still have to find this missing side to finish out our triangle. So I'm going to use Pythagorean theorem, and I'm going to do 12 squared plus b squared equals 13 squared. So b squared can be found with... 13 squared minus 12 squared. B squared is 169 minus 144, which is 25. And if you take the square root of that on both sides, you get B is equal to five. So our missing piece of the puzzle up here is five. Okay, let's do the other one. Uh oh let's pretend that's B and you're given tangent tangent is opposite over adjacent remember I told you guys in class not to worry about this negative sign unless you're drawing your triangle in the appropriate quadrant as if it's on the circle if you're gonna draw it in the circle then you have to give it direction left right up and down based on the opposite and adjacent side. But I'm just drawing a generic triangle right now, and we're gonna pretend like it's a right triangle because it, I don't wanna go back and redo that. But my opposite to B would be four. I'm not gonna put that negative sign there because I'm drawing a generic, or generic triangle, and I'm going to check my quadrants for my positive and negative sign when working the formula. Adjacent would be three, and everybody knows a three, four, five triangle. So that means that side is five. And then again, one last thing before we get started on the formula. It's quadrant four, which means sine is negative and cosine is positive. Great. So we've got the values that we need, the quadrants that we need, and we're being asked in this problem to find cosine of A plus B. So the formula for that would be cosine, cosine, sine, sine. If I'm adding in the formula or in the original problem, then the formula calls for subtraction for cosine. And then we would fill in angle A, angle B, angle A, angle B. Now let's evaluate. Cosine of A. So you're going to go back to triangle A. It's your first triangle. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's going to be 5 over 13. And check your quadrant. Cosine is negative in this quadrant, so this has to be negative. 
cosine of B. We're going to go over here to B. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's going to be 3 over 5. And cosine for this triangle, which is in quadrant 4, is positive. So that gets to remain positive. Minus sine of triangle A, or sine of A. So go back to sine, and we want opposite over hypotenuse. So that's going to be 12 over 13. And check for positive and negative. Sine is positive, so that gets to stay positive. Lastly, sine of B. So go back to your B triangle. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so 4 over 5. Check your positive and negative. Sine is negative in this quadrant, so that's negative. That's how you create your triangles, how you use your triangles, and plug it into the formula. Last thing we got to do is just the math. Yay. So when you multiply fractions, you multiply top to top. And bottom to bottom. So this is negative 15 over 65 minus negative 48 over 65. Let's consolidate a little. We have common denominators, so we can make one fraction with a denominator of 65. Negative 15, and this minus a negative, negative and a negative, becomes a positive. That reduces to 33 over 65. And there's your answer for number two. Great. Let's go back, or let's keep going down to double angle. On double angle, the first one of, of double angle says 2 sine 75 degrees cosine of 75 degrees. Now, if you guys really wanted to split 75 up into 45 plus 30, you could. But then you'd have to do double angle for, I mean, you'd have to do sum and difference for sine and then for cosine and then multiply those answers together and multiply by two. We don't want to do that. So you can always look on your formula sheet to see is there something else I could do so that I could evaluate this particular expression. And what you would find is a formula that looks like this. Sine of 2a equals 2 sine a cosine a. All of this looks like all of this, right? So sine of 2a is 2 sine 75 cosine of 75 and, and look your, your a values correspond to 75 degrees so if a is 75 degrees then you can plug it in here for this value If A equals 75, then 2A would be 2 times 75, which equals 150 degrees. So that means I'm looking at sine of 2 times 75, or sine of 150 degrees was what they were originally using. And we know that sine of 150 is 1 half. Let me show you why. 150 degrees is here. 150. This is 180. So that makes 150 a 30 degree reference angle in quadrant 2. 30 degree reference in quadrant two. So a sine of 30 degrees is one half all day every day. And in quadrant two, 
all students. Sine is positive, so it's positive one half. There you go. Last but not least. Cosine squared of 15 degrees minus sine squared of 15 degrees. And again, 15 is not an angle we know, so we have to use some other formula to help us evaluate that. Sum and difference would work, but it would take forever. Look through your formula list to see what else you can use, and you find that cosine of 2a can be used as cosine squared of a minus sine squared of a. So once again, our a values correspond to 15 degrees. So I'm going to use that and I'm going to plug into my a value that 15 degrees that we've identified, which means we're simply looking for the cosine of 30 degrees. Cosine of 30 degrees is root 3 over 2. It's in quadrant one, so it's positive. And you're done, my little geniuses. Have fun with that.